I was born in 1900. I raised up in Sequatchie Valley. When I grew up, I hear my dad play the fiddle. He was, he's one of the finest fiddle players that I ever heard play. My dad, Tom Douglas. <laughs> That's exactly the way Dad sets and plays the fiddle. Al Ferguson was my dad's cousin, and he was a clawhammer banjo player, and a good one at that. His wife was named Sari, Sari Ferguson. She was a granny woman. <laughs> She done a lot of that kind of work too. She was a good one, buddy. She was, she was a good old doctor. I started playing the guitar with Dad, and we played all over Cumberland Mountain for the square dances. Stay a week or two at the time. My dad gave me his fiddle and told me, he said, Bob, I want you to learn to be a good fiddle player. an old breakdown tune here my dad used to play way back out there called I Love Somebody. tune here and my dad used to play a whole lot so I, I learned it from him and uh, the name of it is Choctaw Bill so I'm going to try to play a little bit of it now.
wink the other eye. Jess Young, he was one of the better fiddle players in that day and time. He played an old fiddle tune called the Old Cackham Hen. <clears throat> My dad also played it, but each one of them played it a little bit different. But Jess Young told me that he learned to play cackling hen from an old black man lived in Chattanooga. He wanted me to meet the old fella, he's still living. And uh, Jess said, Bob said, let's just go down there. And so we went in to see the old fella and uh, he was sitting in a rocking chair. And uh, Jess, we talked to him a little while. And, and uh, directly Jess asked him, could he play us a tune? I said, I won't. He said, Mr. Douglas here would like to hear you play a tune. The old man said he just wasn't able to play. Said he just wasn't able to play at all. So Jess knowed he drank. And uh, uh, there was a young colored boy there. And I asked him, I said, uh, do you know where you can get half pint of whiskey at? Said, yes, sir. He says, I know where I can get it. So he was going out a few minutes, and he wasn't going for just a few minutes. And he come back with a half pint of moonshine. And this old color fella took a big swig of it. And we talked a little while longer, and, and uh, he took another swig. Directly he told his old lady, he says, said, bring me my fiddle out here. <laughs> After we left there, he said that he, he used to be around that old man a whole lot, and he said he learned all, a lot of his fiddle playing from him. 
The first time that I ever heard this tune played was by Phil and Jess Young over in Sequatchie Valley. He's the guy that I learned it off of, Jess Young. So we're going to try to play a little of it for you. Smoke Behind the Clouds.
The Allen Brothers had a, a contract with the Victor people, and at that time I was a playing some of Allen Brothers around Chattanooga. And they got after me and started begging me to go to Atlanta with them. They had a recording session coming up, you know, down the Victor people. So I agreed to go with them. And there's four or five of us getting up. We took two, three more guitar players with us. And, uh, back then they'd put up quilts over the windows and toe sacks and everything else, you know, to get the sound right. We started to play and, and uh, all at once the feller stopped us before we got one side made. Uh, the operator sto uh, stopped us and says, wait a minute, he says, says, let's play a little less over and see how it's going to sound, you see. And they played a little over to see how it's going to sound. And all at once someone comes, ding dong, ding dong. And it was a train bell in there ringing. Come to find out there's a doggone switch yard right behind the buildings. You know, them old switch engines and steam engines. The man says, well, he says, said, we're going to have to move the studio. Said, that's all we can do. We're going to have to move it away from here. And said, that's going to take a week. When the week is out, they had moved the studio plumb out on, uh, on Peachtree Street. And we went out there that day, and we was fixing to go in there and start playing, making a record. Had everything set up, and, and here comes Jimmy Rogers. And he come in out there, and he had a, a date set up to record, you know. And you know, he, he wanted us to, to run him ahead of this fella, run us, uh, him ahead of us on the recording. I and mean, we'd been waiting a week. And uh, boy, he just cussed up a storm. He acted awful nasty. And he stood down there and cussed a while, and then he got his guitar and left, and I never did see him anymore. That's the kind of feller he was. Okay, we're coming up with another good old break now. Now, the Bucking Mule. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
tell of a old time fiddle player called Sawmill Tom Smith yeah. up here out from East Chattanooga, back up in the holler, one of them hollers down there. He lived there. And I used to play guitar with Tom, you know, a long time ago. And uh, he was a fine fiddle player, old time fiddle player. And uh, I heard him play that Muddy Road to Ducktown one time, and I thought of it, and I thought was, I, I'd like to learn that tune. And uh, Tom's the only one that played it that I know of, none of the rest of the fiddle players. And they still don't Tom play Tom was it. sitting out on the porch. The building he lived in had a, one of them old country houses, a great big old long porch on it, you know. Tom was sitting out there trying to file a handsaw. And, uh, I told him, I said, Tom, I said, uh, would you be able to play a little bit of that on the fiddle for me, that muddy road to duck town? He said, Bob, he said, I just ain't able to play no fiddle no more. He was a dying then, I think, with cancer, you know, he just wasn't able to do nothing. We sat there and talked a while, you know. Him. I finally talked Tom into it, and he told his wife, said, bring my old fiddle out here, he called her by her name. She brought his fiddle out on the porch and, and uh, he got it tuned up and he sat there and tried to play that for me, you know, but he couldn't, he couldn't use his bow. But he did play enough. Well, I do an old breakdown called Muddy Road to Ducktown. And this tune was uh, the history of it is during the war, the soldiers was building a road from Georgia to Ducktown, and the road's still there now. The soldiers was, and, and the road was all, it was all for muddy, you know, the road they're working on. So they had a dance one Saturday night. Somebody got to play in this tune, and they said, what can we call it? So that's what they come up with, Muddy Road to Ducktown. Now that's the history this old man was a dying give me on it. Muddy Road to Ducktown. Thank you. 
fella up in Indiana, and a medicine doctor, medicine man. And his name was, they called him White Owl. He claimed to be part Indian, I don't believe he was. <laughs> but anyhow, he passed as one, you know, medicine man. Me and uh, Curly Fox and a uh, little guy used to live down here at Graysville. He was a comedian. I don't know where you ever know Jimmy Brown. He was a buck dancer, you know, and a comedian and played the harp. He was with us and he, played, he was playing blackface comedian. Back then, uh, uh, I didn't know too many tunes on the fiddle, but I played the fiddle. Curly didn't play the fiddle back then. He was learning to play a little, but he hadn't learned much. So uh, he played the guitar with me. I played the fiddle on them medicine shows. And Curly was trying to learn to play the fiddle. And he, a lot of the tunes he tried to play, he had good notes and he could just know the fool out of the fiddle. But he's, he couldn't get his bow to operate with his fingers, you know. He start playing a tune, you know, and he, I don't know if his fingers would get ahead of his bowing or something. Or the, I don't know how he done it. But I broke him from it. I think, I think he is one of the best fiddle players back when he's at his self, I believe that I ever hear it. White Al had come out on the stage and make a little talk, and then and then he'd call us out and introduce us to all of us, you know, and then we would go into our show then. We'd make a little music to start with. It was in a kind of a park like, you know, we'd play out in the park where we had our tent and our wagon up, you know, and everything, and, and we'd always have a big crowd, you know. They wasn't sitting down, they were standing up, you know. He'd get out there and announce it to the crowd that, uh, tell him about me playing the fiddle, you know. And he said, this fella can play anything you want to hear. I said, if you got a tune, just, just call it out. That made me so mad at him when he do that. I made, I made his medicine all the time. This medicine was a, tell you what it was, when he'd get it, he'd get it in a powder. It was a green a powder. Big old crock jar. And I put so much of it in there and stir it up, you know. Make the medicine, then I had my bottles. And I'd bottle it up and put the label on it, see? Put a label on it. That was my job to do that. I done that ever so often when, in, when we need medicine. Man. And he, in a way, it was good medicine. Boy, it would work the fool out of that bottle. It had the label and everything on it, telling them what it'd do for you and all this and that and the other, you know? <laughs> People, people buy it. A lot of them claimed it done them good, too. <laughs> he just sold the medicine. We put on the shows and he sold the medicine. Play another old tune now called Climbing Up the Golden Stairs.
give you another good old time and tune now is uh, called Old Bill Johnson. Radio presents the East Chattanooga Saturday Night Jamboree. I worked for the Jack Savage Band a long time at uh, WDOD Playhouse on Market Street in Chattanooga. Slim Totten. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome man. to the East Chattanooga Saturday Night Jamboree. And a we had Uncle Joe Patton, who Kidwell's was a call hammer of names of people, about the best three. one I ever hear him play. Let's everybody get in the mood and call up Bob Douglas and his long star. The girl there with, with us, we called her Little Miss Muffet. And he had Cousin Heidi. She was a gospel singer. She was very popular. Uncle Joe Powell, after that, married little Miss Muffet. I formed a band to play on the radio, WAPO, in Chattanooga. And I uh, had my own show. I also found the Leuven Brothers at a, at, a sh at a show down there, talent show on Main Street in Chattanooga. And I made them a member of my band. And they, they played with me a long time on my show.
after Dad gave me his fiddle in 1928, and I heard there was going to be a fiddler's contest at the Moral Auditorium in Chattanooga. See, I was living on the mountain at that time. And uh, I told my dad, I said, I believe I'll go down to that contest. I ain't never been to one. They had a big crowd in the auditorium. It's full of folks. And uh, we had fiddle players there from everywhere. And I played in that contest and won it over all them fiddle players. Well, I can't remember all of them. There was a bunch of them in it, but some of the main fiddle players was uh, Jess Young, Sawmill Tom Smith, and uh, Clayton McMitchin, Low Stokes, uh, Now that Indian Natchez. From that on, I come in playing contests, taking them everywhere I went now. I don't know how many contests I played in, but I sure did play a lot of them. The one I care the most about, I got a big and I won at, uh, at uh, up in Washington, D.C. when the the Smithsonian Institute sponsored an old time fiddler's contest up there. They was fiddle players there from everywhere. I, I played again over a hundred fiddle players. Champions that come here, the champions from California. All of them, I played again them up there, me and Georgie Boy did them on it. Yes, sir. Georgia Boy was a fine guitar player. I think he was the best that I ever had to play with me. So I really liked his guitar playing. I sure do miss him. Me and Georgia played together for a good many years. And we played all kind of show dates and everything. Thank you.
like that pretty well? We're going to do you a little blues number now. The old Memphis blues. County Blues. See, I was born at College Station. It used to be a company store there. Country fellas unload their cost ties, you know, and stack them up, and the train would pick them up, you know. There's train running up there once a day then, the pipe boat. 
every morning about 10 o'clock, you could hear that train coming up the valley, and, and it sounds like it's coming right through our room. That there tune of Squatchy Valley, me and, me and Dad put that together. We got a lot of our stuff at Squatchy Valley and this listen to that train. Ain't no train runs up there now. They quit a long time ago. It's nice having you all down to see me. And you all come back and see me sometime. Maybe we'll play a few tunes. Nice to have you down. <laughs>